We usually review smartphones and laptops here, but for desktops, we usually don't dwell there much. However, my love for tech started when I built my own desktop from a long time ago, and tinkering with both hardware and software components is what got me here today. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about desktops, particularly the five new things regarding the latest Intel 12th gen core processors, codenamed Outer Lake. I believe that Intel is fundamentally going to change the world of x86 computers since the 12th gen core processors is so different in terms of its architecture compared to the 11th gen. So let's talk about it today. Number one, processors. We'll start off from the beginning. Before a processor is made, the processor needs to be designed first. That is what we call CPU architecture. And for the new Intel 12th gen core processors, the architecture is actually one of the biggest highlights. Instead of however many cores that are duplicates of each other, Intel decided to take a hybrid approach. Now we have a total of two different types of cores, so we have P cores and E cores. And as the name suggests, P cores means that it is for performance, whereas E cores is meant for efficiency cores. The P cores take up a majority of the space, whereas the E cores is kind of serving like a sidekick. So the E cores is meant to take up some other menial tasks like Windows Update, Discord, Spotify, or Notepad to free up the P cores and provide even better performance out of it while gaming or you're using it to do some content creation software like Premiere Pro or Photoshop. As a quick note, not all 12th gen Intel Core processors do have this hybrid architecture, so you will need to refer to this table for more information. Also, be sure to use Windows 11 with the 12th gen Intel Core processors so that it can perform the best. And number two, now that we have done with the processor itself, we'll move on to the socket because as you can see on this motherboard here, the motherboard of our choice this time is the Gigabyte Z690 Aero G and for 12th gen processors, we can see that the CPU's PCB is actually a lot bigger than the 11th gen. So you can see the new 12th gen on this side here is a lot taller and the installation process is kind of folded so it will provide even more even pressure throughout the entire CPU PCB. So the installation process is still pretty much the same as before so what we have to do is to lift up this clamp here but now since it's using a folder design, we have to also unfold this. So what we have to do is to put the CPU like this, give it a bit of a wiggle to make sure it's in place. Also align this little triangle here with the motherboard triangle. Lay it flat. Then you need to apply quite a lot of pressure, don't be afraid. There you go, you can now take this cover off. Yeah. Just as a quick note, you have to check if the cooler you're going to use on this motherboard here supports the new LGA 1700 socket because you probably gonna need a new base for your cooler to cover up this entire larger surface area of the IHS of the processor. And number three, let's talk about the chipset of this motherboard here. So as mentioned earlier, the motherboard of our choice is the Gigabyte Z690 Aero G and it is using the latest Intel Z690 chipset. This Z690 chipset supports super high-speed ports like PCIe Gen 5 for GPUs and SSDs for the future. Even though I don't really like the word future-proofing since it's quite impossible to do so, you are at least going to be strong for a few years ahead with this setup. Some motherboards even come with a lot more expandability, for example, multiple NVMe SSD slots, and also a lot more USB headers. And I mean, one can never have too many USB ports, right? I know this because I'm one of those people who would rather have way too many USB ports rather than too few. And number four is the DDR5 RAM support. One of the future proving point is actually the support of DDR5 RAM because they all come with super high speeds and also larger in capacity as well compared to the previous generations. So DDR5 has a lot of changes in terms of its architecture as well, like the integrated PMIC, which stands for Power Management Integrated Circuit at the center of the memory module to reduce footprint. And also do keep in mind that 12th gen Intel processors do come in two different flavors. So you can get it in either DDR5 or DDR4 versions. So if you opt in for the DDR4 versions, that means you can still use your 
existing RAM if you're using DDR4, so you have to spend less actually. One of my favorite features that is only exclusively available for Intel platforms is Thunderbolt support. The latest generation of Thunderbolt is Thunderbolt 4 and it offers a maximum throughput of 40 gigabits per second and it also supports up to two 4K displays or a single 8K monitor with just one single cable. The transfer speed is also very high at a maximum of 32 gigabits per second. That literally means I can buy some Thunderbolt 4 certified external storage and edit 4K videos stored in that external storage, yet I won't have any performance impact. And shopping for Thunderbolt 4 products is also a lot easier compared to basic USB-C because we can just look for anything that is certified for Thunderbolt 4 and that includes the cable and it will work up to spec. And that's it! The future is looking very promising since it has a lot of fundamental upgrades compared to the previous generation of Intel chips.